What's up? My name is Alex Terranova. I am the host of the Dream Mason podcast. Welcome. We started this in 2017 because we wanted to highlight the journey of Dream Masons. There's a Dream Mason in all of us. A Dream Mason is someone who is awake to their dreams and driven by the passion, the purpose, and the desire to turn that dream into reality. We interview athletes, gold medalists, Super Bowl champions, artists, creatives, eight, nine figure entrepreneurs, spiritual leaders, and everyone in between. And sometimes we even walk them through challenges that they're currently facing. So depending on whether you're catching this as a regular interview or a playing with problems segment, there is something for you, whether you're at the peak of your journey, at the low point of your journey. I look forward to having you join me on this journey. And I hope that this show helps you unleash your inner Dream Mason. What's up? This is Alex Terranova. This is the Dream Mason podcast. I feel like I haven't recorded in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, podcasts have been airing because they've been recorded previously, but it feels like this is the first time I'm sitting down at this microphone in front of the computer doing this in a couple of weeks. Well, I, I didn't even realize that. I just kind of felt like a little, little jittery, jittery, a little nervous. Um, maybe it's because I have blonde hair and it's the first time I'm, I'm a blonde and I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be having more fun and I don't know if I am right now. Um, what do I want to talk about today? Well, let's, um, you know, what I want to share is I want to talk about trusting, um, the signs or the medicine that comes through us in different ways. And I think it'll relate to this, to this episode. Um, so recently I went on a plant medicine journey and in this plant medicine journey, I really just wanted to have fun. I was like, I want to have fun. I want to be playful. I just want to like be in my joy and my, my self-expression of joy. And often when I go into uh, medicine journeys and there's other people, that's often what I want. And what often happens is I end up being like a space holder. I end up becoming the person who other people end up sitting with and crying to and holding and and having to almost be kind of like a masculine force that holds a space that other people get to work out their uh, traumas or issues with the masculine uh, with. So what I mean by that is like, I don't have to do very much. I just have to be me and people get to work out their shit with me kind of just sitting there being patient, listening, holding them and creating the space for them. And often at the end of these journeys, I feel really good that I've been able to do this for people. And I'm often like, I didn't get my journey. I didn't get my experience. And while you probably can hear that is my experience, right? I get to be that, that kind of shaman grounding force for someone. It's not the experience I wanted. And uh, there's two things here. One is I think about how often life is just like that. We're like, I want this experience. I want it to be like this. I want it to be like this. And life gives us something else. And then we're upset that we didn't get the one we wanted when the thing that we got is actually the thing that we needed. And I'm so present to how I needed those experiences um, to rebuild and recreate my relationship to the feminine, my relationship to my own masculine, to be able to support men on my men's retreats and, and men that I'm working with and women that I'm working with. And I think because of that, this time I got the experience I wanted. And I even noticed there were moments where my wife was having her own experience where some of it was great for her and some of it wasn't. And I could have become the like caretaker. I could have gone and just like taken care of her. And there was some voice inside of me that was like, no, this is your, you get to have your experience this time and you can go check on her. You can go love her, but you're, we're going to keep coming back. And, um, and I had so much fun. I had so much fun and I was so joyous and I was so expressive. And it just reminded me of like what it felt like to be a kid almost. And, uh, you know, I share this, um, I've talked recently over the last year, a lot about medicines and plant medicines on this podcast. Um, and while I don't, I'm not a, a stand for anybody to go do anything they don't want to do, but if you, if you're ever feeling curious, if you're ever feeling called, that is the thing because there's something for you there. And while I always am a little bit afraid right before I do it, um, it's always magical. And, uh, it's a real gift to get to feel like a kid again, for even if it's just for a moment in time. 
Let me tell you about our guest. So I recently met our guests and we had an amazing conversation and it, she just felt like a new friend. And we were like, let's get you on here. Let's share your magic and your gifts with this audience. So Hannah Alonzo is a renowned integrative healer and business growth strategist. She has a deep commitment to healing individuals and helping them achieve their highest levels of wealth, joy, love, impact, and growth. She's the founder of the School of Integrative Healing, and she's developed a powerful system of healing that combines multiple modalities and dimensions to provide transforma transformational experiences for her clients. So this is pretty crazy, but she went from making 400 pounds a month, which let's just say is like roughly $400. I think it's actually a little bit more a month though, not very much, to making her first million using a combination of these strategies that she teaches. So I'm really curious to, to share her with you, but to also dive into how she combines very grounded kind of traditional masculine business with spiritual ancient shaman and energetic traditions. Hannah, welcome to the Dream Mason podcast. How are you? I am very well. And I'm excited for this conversation. This is exactly what I want to talk about. Shamanism plus business, because in my head, very much connected. Did you, I always like to ask, like I preambled a little bit and shared, mm -hmm. is there anything you were thinking or anything that came up for you as I was sharing? So much. So you were speaking to this concept of us rejecting an experience because in our mind, we think that we want to have another one, right? And it's life or the universe or whatever you resonate with is, is saying, this is the right experience for you. This is what you need. And we're annoyed because it's like, I want something else. And I actually think that this is one of the biggest blocks in entrepreneurs. You know, they're like, I want to get to a million in two years. And if it's not two years, then I'm going to give up. Or this launch should have been six figures. Or, you know, I wanted to have more people in my program. Or I didn't want to have to go through this hurdle or this obstacle. When actually what we're being given on our business journey is the keys, right? The financial results that we want, the impact results that we want. But we're too busy being annoyed at the present moment that we miss the medicine. So I very much resonated with everything that you're saying. And I was like, this is actually very helpful in business too. Can you give us like a time? Where does this, how did this apply to your business? How did something like this, when you were struggling? <laughs> All of the time. <laughs> People see me and they're like, oh, it must be so easy for you. And I feel really fast, okay? I had felt very fast. Um, but all of the time, <laughs> so this year has been fun for a lot of people. I am one of those people as well. Um, let me give you, an, let me give you, let me give you an example. I, okay, we crossed the million euro line in February this year. I was in India and I put it on my social media and I was like, we've, we played a million. This is incredible. Like, I'm just like, you hippy dippy. <laughs> I look a bit more glam now, but like, this doesn't make sense. How did this happen? And the next day I got blackmailed and ended up nearly in a lawsuit. So this is something, this is something that happened. And so I want to share with how, even though it wasn't something that I desired, because I most definitely didn't, you know, do my manifestation work. Oh, please, someone blackmail me. Like it was not a desire. Um, it was the best medicine I could have received this year. So part of my next stage in business is like, I want to be more visible, right? I want to get my message out in front of people. I know there's a new level of impact for me. I know there's more, right? What does visibility come with? Criticism, <laughs> projections, and um, not everyone has a healthy relationship with money. And when you have a lot of money, people have then projections that they have on money on you. So I feel like this delightful blackmailing situation was an opportunity for me to go, oh, okay, maybe I didn't desire this, but do I have myself in this? Have I got myself in this? Do I, do I actually, can I hold myself in this? Can I still, you know, believe in my integrity? Can I still go out and teach? Can I still sell my courses? Can I still teach, right? Even though someone has been very, very vocal about their strong dislike towards me. And I think that if you are a visionary or you are someone that wants to build to a level that is global, right? You need to be able to hold the duality of I'm doing this extraordinary work and there are people over here that don't get it. 
So that was a really big example of I received something that I didn't desire that was very painful <laughs> and very scary, actually, initially, because I was like, does this happen? Like, I grew up in a village. There were less than, like, 100 people in my village. I didn't, I, I'm not. Lawsuit, that's an American thing. We don't, we don't used to sue people in the UK, you know? Like, that's not a thing in my reality. Um, but it was actually one of the best things that's happened to me this year. Wow. Yeah, we often the the roughest, you know, it's the, the, the most challenging things provide the greatest medicine, um, mm -hmm. the greatest gifts. And we don't necessarily often think that we, we, when those things happen, we, we turn our head down and we like bring ourselves down. And so we can't see the gifts on the other side. We're focused on the thing that happened. And then we miss all the, the gifts that are available to us. I'm curious about when, before we hit a million, before you hit a million euros and you were in your business, how, where did you find yourself challenged and struggling this before you had this big breakthrough? Where, where, how did you struggle and, and, uh, kind of feel stuck at times? So there's, um, there's something that sometimes happens and I don't want to say that it always happens because when we believe something always happens. It. So I'm going to say there's something that sometimes happens. Before we hit a new financial level, we're usually tested, if you want to use that language, or we usually have to experience a series of upgrades in our internal system, okay? It can be an external strategy, but very often this goes alongside with internal changes. So every single financial level that I have experienced has included some of these struggles every single financial level and i'm very vocal about this because i think on social media it can be you know overly um, glamorized right <laughs> but if you want to be an entrepreneur that gets to a certain level in a certain period of time you're gonna have to do the inner work you're gonna have to look at yourself so big ones that come to me when you just say that when I'm going to just give you a little bit of context about my story. When I decided to become an entrepreneur, very naively, um, my mum was dying. She was in her final six months of life, okay? I'd been a, a full-time carer on and off for the last three years. I'd moved back from India where I was working as a yoga teacher and I'd been earning in rupees. So that's how rich I was. <laughs> I got back <laughs> to Europe. <laughs> very wealthy. I was sharing a flat. It wasn't a flat that I wanted to be living in, even though it was a beautiful human and um, who's, who's still a friend now. And I had a lot of health complications that developed, right? Um, because of the chronic stress, I don't know if anyone here listening to this had a loved one, be very ill, we get a lot of phone calls from the doctors, right? The cancer's gone here. Duh, duh, duh. And I didn't have the knowledge that I have now around trauma and healing. So I was in this place, right, where anyone that is reasonable of mind would think was a terrible place to start a business but i am not someone that moves logically through the world so i decided that i was going to start my business with all of these different things going on and i think the the most challenging thing to overcome initially before these results was can i have the faith right can i hold the faith that i'm going to build something important can i hold the faith that i'm going to change lives can i hold the faith you know my relationships were a mess that i'll meet a beautiful partner that will adore me. Can I hold that faith? Whilst right now my life, if I actually look at it, it's 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 chaos, right? And so, a lot of people say to me now, Han, it's really easy for you to to hold the faith. It's very easy for you to hold the faith. I see your life. You live in a in a villa in Ibiza that's worth five point one million. You've got a long term partner. You're healthy. You know. And I'm like. But the reason that I'm able to hold the faith now is because I built it when my life right? Wasn't working. Here's the final thing that I want to say to this, okay? To this piece, because I would say that was the, the biggest thing. And then also being okay with me telling all my friends and family in that time that I was going to be a millionaire and um, them looking at me and being like, oh, you're a ridiculous human. How can you, how can you even think that? But I think and like, how do I want to frame this? I think the faith is the most important thing that we can have in our life, regardless of what we want to create. And I think it's also really important to say 
even though I had faith for everything that I desired, I was still grateful for my present moment. And I still wasn't rejecting the fact that my mum was dying and I wasn't rejecting my health issues and I wasn't rejecting my relationship issues, right? There was a lot still to be grateful for in my life. This isn't a rags to riches story. This is, I was still rich in other ways and I just got richer. And I think it's really important to be able to see life like that because if we're rejecting, like you started, you know, the podcast, if we're rejecting our present moment, if we're angry at, oh, I met another guy and we had sex and he never called me. I did that for four years. It was terrible. Um, <laughs> then you're missing the freaking medicine. <laughs> I'm like, I could tell so many stories from that time of my relationships with people, but that, that's enough for today. This resonates a lot. Um, it's funny, you're talking about like before the, the idea of like before you level up, there's something that's going to test you or happens before challenging. Um, and in some ways, sometimes we level up in other areas that force us to level up in other areas. I'm thinking about like in my own, in my own life, uh, over the last year and a half, I've leveled up my relationship and, rela and my, my romantic life in ways that I, I don't even know that I thought were possible. And now it feels like, and prior to that, it was like my business was just going up, 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 up. And since I've leveled up my romantic relationship, my business feels like it's plateaued and like fallen off. Now, right, comparatively speaking, it's fine. It's great. But in my, from my judgment perspective, it's not up, 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 up anymore. And, um, and it's something that I've been getting really present to is... I keep trying to remind myself, hey, that before you get to go up again, there's often a, a down or a low. And that's how it was in my in my relationship life. Right before I found what I wanted, it felt like I was at rock bottom, which is what created the possibility for the up. Um, but when it comes to the business, I'm like, I am very much rejecting it. I'm like, no, I don't like this. I don't want this to be this way. Um, and, and I'm listening to you and I'm like, and everything I'm doing is, feels like it's not working. And there is this piece of like, I'm, yeah, I'm like, I'm playing tug of war with it. How do you, I'm not, I know I'm not the only one, right? I'm not the only one that has this experience that has had, has, has an experience of like grow, 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 grow. And then all of a sudden the grow feels like it hits something and it just doesn't, it can't break through. And sometimes it goes down or plateaus. How do you support people when, when they're, when they find themselves in it? You have to see what within you is creating the, the plateau so i'm gonna make up a situation for you now okay i'm not i'm, I'm not gonna ask probing questions but i'm gonna make up a situation you can ask so, probing well you can ask probing questions we can be like totally <laughs> okay so what stories do you have around love and money and having both did you just believe that you could thrive in business and thrive in a relationship? Did you believe that all good things could be in your life? I think so. I don't think, I don't think I've ever thought those two things could be opposing. I think I always actually thought it would make it easier that when I was single and had a business, it was like they were fighting for my attention. I had a lot of attention on each one. And it's like, if I put my attention on my business, I pulled it away from my love life. And my love life was often a distraction to my business. It would, it would, I would get like very wrapped up in my dating and love life because that filled up my ego a lot more than the business. The business, mm -hmm. business for me always felt, feels like it's a quick, it's a quick hit. It's a quick rush. But the, the dating women game for my ego was always a way bigger hit, a way bigger rush. So it would pull me away. So I always felt like when I was in a relationship, my business was easier because I wasn't as distracted. Um, so I don't, you know, I, the, the thing that comes up is in having this level of relationship, this level of um, building a family, building a life together, suddenly there's the, pr there's a pressure of the, the masculine pressure to provide and to create um, and the fear of like letting, letting my partner down. 
So for example, if I had had someone, I had a client that had been going up, up, up for growth, right? And then they'd either hit a glass ceiling or they'd gone down. If it was a short-term thing, we would assume, oh, this is just part of the growth. What do we have to learn here so we can burst through the glass ceiling? If it's more prolonged, I would ask what in myself or what in yourself is creating this situation? So let's go back to the laws of the universe. What do I know to be true with absolute certainty? Everything, right, that is in effect in our life, everything that is happening in our life has a cause. Cause is consciousness. Our life is a manifestation of consciousness. So there is something within your consciousness that is creating this result. So every time I come up against something, the reason that I'm able to burst through it is because my first go-to thing is what within me is creating this. Is this a trauma pattern? Is this a belief system? Is this a fear? And what's really interesting is when we talk about fear and when we talk about pressure, right? What we sometimes do in business, it's like I want to imagine right that you're you're scared at in business and you're trying to get to the next level but you don't think it's going to come and then there's pressure so what do we do we hold on it's like you grasp your hands right what can come through when our hands are grasped nothing, yeah, nothing yeah. so sometimes it's an energetic thing and this is why i always say business is multi-dimensional it's an energetic thing of like how can i create that safety within me as well so i can go like that and let the good in it could be a belief system around um, oh, now I'm at this level of relationship. I've got to give more attention there. If I give more attention there, I'm not as focused in the business. Therefore, I won't get the results. That can lead to a low in results. The point is, is it can be a multitude of things that are needing to be undesirable results. I put everything through four levels and I ask myself on what level, right? Or which one of these multiple levels am I experiencing a block or something that I need to refine and look at, okay? So the first level is practical, strategic um, questions, right? Does my business model support sustainable scaling? Like that's important, right? Do I have repeatable profit and money-making systems that I can rinse and repeat on a monthly basis that don't burn me out, okay? Those are all of your practical questions. Do I have the team to hold the clients that I want to have, right? You know, there's a multitude of questions that I can ask at this level. So if I had a client, we'd look at that. Do we have to clean up something on a foundational structural business level? If it's a no, then we'd start looking at emotional and mental. So I do healing processes where I can track a wound or a belief in the body. This is the shamanic work. Um, but, you know, let's say that Alex came to me and I said, okay, so you're in the situation with your business. Okay, yeah, how, how do you feel in your body when you tell me this story? Oh, I feel in a contraction in my chest. When was the first time you felt that contraction in your chest? Um, I'm three years old, to do with my parents. What was the story that you told yourself? It's like very simple processes, but what it does is it takes me to the root cause in consciousness and we can clean that up. So we would do a clean up job in the mental and emotional plane. We'd also look at belief systems that maybe are... This happens very often in business as well. It's like, oh, I've done all of this belief work to get to this next level. And we don't realize that, yes, those beliefs got you to that level, but you're going to need to change those beliefs to get to the, it's like, it's a constant refinement, right? Money is always coming to me. It's no longer good enough. <laughs> so that, that's where I would look. The spiritual plane is blooming fabulous because when we look at life and business from the level of the soul, what we're actually looking at is what is your resilience to obstacles? What's your faith and trust in the process of life? And it's actually the processes to find that medicine that we've been talking about. So I can guide processes in that, and that's what I do with my clients. Um, energetic is like the playground. It's like energetically, what am I holding and what am I creating? Maybe you're doing the strategy. But like in your head, all you're thinking about is I'm not going to be able to pay expenses. You could do a strategy that made someone else a million. But if your dominant thought and your dominant vibration is I'm not going to make it me, this could be a thing for the situation that you're saying. What if I don't have enough money for um, the you know for supporting my family? Then it doesn't matter if you're doing all of the right moves, you won't get the results or they'll be really limited. So that's kind of the filter that I put everything through. I love that. So the the four levels are like practical and strategic, emotional and mental is the second one, spiritual is the third, and energetic is the fourth. Mm -hmm. 
I love that. That's and it works always, yeah. <laughs> not all times, <laughs> which is what I like about it. Let's talk. So let's talk about, cause you, you just brought it up a little bit. Your, the shaman piece, the energy piece, the spiritual piece. Will you give us a little bit of, of, um, I don't know, insight or uh, background into like, how did you find that? Um, and what your, what your experiences with it have been. So let's kind of rewind back to when sure. my mom was ill and I, I was very frustrated because I'd been doing everything that I was going to do to be well, right? I slept eight to 10 hours. I did yoga. I ate my vegetables. I ate more fucking vegetables than anyone on planet earth. And I felt terrible. Okay. I felt really ill and it, the question in my head was like if health was just eat your vegetables and sleep well like i would i would i would feel good like there has to be more going on and you know when we ask questions the universe does respond but in unexpected ways and for me the response was was this this shamanic training that appeared about six months prior to my mom passing it made no sense for me to do it i didn't have the money I actually borrowed the money from my father. I called him up and then he Googled shamanism. He was like, Hannah, are you aware you're asking me to pay for a cult? <laughs> he was very frightened, but he he knew we were kind of in a desperate place emotionally. Um, I had to go to England and Romania, and but there was just something within me. It was the most inconvenient, impractical, illogical choice of my life. But there was something within me, and I trust this more so than anything. It's what's directed my life. There was something in me that said, you've got to be there. Okay, you've got to be there. It, you don't know what's going to happen there, but you've got to be there. And I was terrified. But what I learned changed my life. I did um, a training with Chris Waters. It's called The Four Winds. I recommend it to every single human on the planet. She is one of the most phenomenal teachers um, I've had the, the pleasure to work with. And I always say this. And I learned that, firstly, we carry in our bodies, emotional and mental memories in our DNA from our ancestors. That's a thing. I also learned about trauma, even though they don't use the word trauma in Shabbat traditions, it's what you're healing. And I learned tools to start bending consciousness and reality. And this is when I actually started firstly to make money in a business sense, but I also started to heal my body. And I started getting answers to you know, I was on antidepressants and I was really like unhappy as a teenager. And I started getting answers to things that I, I, I had never really understood about myself. So for me, this course really did, and, and I really mean this, unlock a lot of my life. I will say is that I'm a, an implementer. So I didn't just do the course. I, I live the work to this day. And this is about four or five um four or five years ago and let me just tell you one final story about this and I don't think I've told this on a podcast but it was so perfectly divinely timed was when my mom passed away I was in Malaga she was in Salamanca and I look at my housemate and I say you know mom's gonna go I don't know why I knew but the shamanic you know work had started unlocking a knowing in me which is what drives my business too um, and so I go on this train and I see my mom and and she does pass away three days later and it's beautiful because I've been training for this moment doing this the spiritual work and the next day is my shamanic training in Romania of which I go to okay so can you hear my commitment <laughs> and my conviction and my implementation right because a lot of people give me a lot of excuses I go to this training and um I didn't know because I hadn't you know researched the training on that training a, you know, a day after my mom passed, we learned how to give shamanic rights for, for death, right? I had no idea this was going to happen. And we were able to help my mom in her dying process. Um, I mean, it was just, it was extraordinary. And I realized everything that I'd seen as my mom passed away, right, was then what I was taught in this shamanic training. Mm. I'm saying this because it's not everyone's path, but it was so mine, mm. you know? There was no way that it couldn't be mine. Mm, that's beautiful. Uh, and that you got to have that experience like perfectly timed with your with your mom. 
Yeah. And to tie it to business, it's... physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic, these are the four governing principles of the universe according to the shaman. I don't tell people I teach shamanic business, but I teach shamanic business. <laughs> I'm like, I package it as multidimensional, but it's shamanic. <laughs> what do you, when you think about that, the training that you got, I'm familiar with the four, I, I don't, you know, I'm familiar with the four winds, um, which is very, for people listening, it's, it's, it's South American, you know, it's, I think Peru, Peru, South American, um, indigenous shamanic training that you went and got in Romania, which is <laughs> interesting. That just happens to be where it was. But, um, but the four winds is one of like, I would say the, the leaders, um, in this war, um, besides that experience, what did what did it unlock for you, like diving into to this, like these indigenous spiritual and healing practices? What difference did it just make for you as a human? I think that on some level, I've always been very connected to that. You know, even as a child, I was just mentioning my favorite conversation topic to try and have with my family was about life and death. Um, some of you may resonate with this, some of you may not, but I'm just going to throw it in there. Um, I have past life memory from working as a shaman, as a death doula, which is something that I do now, and a life doula. So I believe personally I came connected to that, even though it was very suppressed through years of alcohol and eating disorders and depression. I do believe that it was there. Um, so for me, after the initial fear, it was a sense of going home. It was a sense of oh, life is so beautiful. It was a sense of understanding. What I feel like the shamans have is a bit more of a manual, a map of the universe. And if you think about our schooling systems, we're not actually taught anything about life. We're not taught about relationships. We're not taught about God. We're not taught about love. We're not taught about consciousness, spirituality. And then you kind of just thrown into adulthood. And no wonder so many of us struggle and, you know, and, and suffer along the way. And so for me, finding this wisdom, studying this wisdom, practicing this, applying this to my life, living and breathing it it was like it just it felt like a release it felt like oh i know this this is familiar and thank bloody god that they created this because now life makes sense i don't feel like i'm just lost i'm like i've got a formula i've got a code i know what i'm doing and then let's talk about you you've brought this now into your into your very let's just say, you know, traditional business. And when I say traditional, it's like, you're helping people make more money. You're helping people grow their businesses and scale. So the kind of people that show up to work with you, well, let me ask you, what kind of people show up to work with you? I think we have two camps. I think we have one camps of people that are like, um, very much from a spiritual background. Right. And so for them, it's, it's a breath of fresh air that someone is teaching business and spirituality and um, that's actually probably the dominant group of people that I work with and, and and here's a big thing is that I believe that the people that are most spiritual aren't the people that reject wealth the people that are most spiritual understand right that everything is neutral and we are infinite potential right they're people that allow themselves to go after their desires and experience a full life so that's really the people that I get from the spiritual community and then we have people that maybe have been in more conventional business, but for, for some reason it's not worked for them. So let me give you an example. I had someone just do one of her free courses and she's sold planes for 10 years. <laughs> like, like air, like airplanes, sold airplanes. Yeah, yeah. Airplanes. Okay. yeah she sold airplanes. That's, do you know that was a thing? I would, if you sell planes, it makes right. sense that people sell them. Somebody, somebody so, sell, somebody's selling everything. <laughs> but I'd never thought about it okay so I was very excited I was like we've got a plane sales lady this is you know and she'd been in in, in plane sales um it just makes me laugh for, for 10 years okay so she wasn't a business newbie and she did a free course a free four-day course with me and I get this message from her afterwards and I was like I she, you know she says and, and I, she says I've been in business for 10 years and I've never heard anyone explain it to me this way. I feel like you've answered questions that I've had for years and I've never known the answer to. So 
we do get a lot of people that have been in conventional business, but there's something within them. They're like, this can't be it all. Right. And I just went, uh, yeah, a few months ago, we went to a retreat, intelligent change. Do you guys know the five minute journals? Have you heard of them? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Familiar with five minute journal. The founders of the five minute journals did a kind of private invite only retreat in Ibiza and we were invited. And so everyone there was either an influencer with a million followers or a celebrity in the business kind of world. What was very interesting for me was, apart from having a great time, was that the people that had made big, big, big business, and I'm talking about building multi-billion dollar companies, had got to the end and they were unhappy and they were the most desperate to try breath work. So I think just business without spirituality isn't working. Just spirituality where we say I've got no desires and I've got no money isn't working. It's an overcorrect. So for me, it's like, let's find this place of harmony and who wants to join me? Brilliant. Please come along. I want to ask you about your your relationship. I don't know that much about your partner. I know he does he does men's work. How does how does your journey and your connection to, you know, the spiritual, the energetic, your success in business, how has this impacted your relationship? Is he on this journey with you? Is he, is he just let you go? What, what's that like? Um, so before I met Craig, Craig is my partner, I had had a series of disasters of relationships and I'd been doing a lot of healing work. It's like what you said, you know, I had a really big dip and I was like, no, one take this seriously. So we were very intentional when we came into our relationship okay so craig's 10 years older than me um he'd gone through a lot of personal inner work himself and he was only available for a type of relationship and i felt the same you know and so the context to our relationship which we continuously refine was that we are a relationship that highly prioritizes and values growth and progression so I think me being a woman, <laughs> um, it can sometimes be interesting for a masculine partner because I make more than my partner. That's been a journey. It's equaling up. So we've had questions around how do we maintain polarity when there is a you know an income imbalance. But because the context of our relationship is we work on this together instead of you know we fight. Every single thing that we've had to overcome together has only brought us closer together. And I feel very much in resonance to what you said about we've gone through a period where your relationship has improved. You didn't know it could be like this. Well, I saw Steve Hardington in India earlier this year. And he models love and devotion in a way that I'm, I'm yet to experience in another person. And so I got home from India and I said, Craig, I'm going to learn how to love you even more. Obviously, he was very excited about all that. He was like, I don't know why you're saying this, but okay, I'm in. What's that? And, but, but this is us, right? If there's another level of love, let's do it. If there's another level of business, let's do it. If there's another level of wealth, let's do it. If we're going to move to 17 countries in five years, let's do it. But we've had agreement and we worked really hard to be where we are at and you know, we do things that other couples don't do. You know, on Sundays we have a meeting and we talk about your needs being met. Practically speaking, where do you need support this week? You know, emotionally, are you okay? We're not perfect, but we are committed to the growth together. And I think that makes a very, very big difference for the type of relationship that we've both chosen. So it feels like you have, when you say growth and progression, it's like, hey, this is what we value. We're on the same page with our values. So that keeps us, it's growth and progression are your compass. It's your due north. That's where we're both headed. So regardless of what else is happening, we know we're headed to the same place. A hundred percent. And there's also this difference because we're very different people. I'm probably more business and money orientated. He's a double Pisces. You'd be happy looking at a leaf for seven hours, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> Sorry. I like that about him because I think he waters down my fire, which is freaking a little lot, you know? And um, so I think there's, but we, and we're very careful with the language that we use because we used to say, oh God, we're so different. And now we're really like intentional to say we're so complementary, mm -hmm. right? But that's been a big thing that we've had to, to create. And there's been 
yeah, there's been phases in this relationship that have been easy and there've been phases that have been the opposite of easy. Um, but it's exactly, we come back to those two main values of we're growth orientated and we, we, you know, we're always in progression. Also, we checked our astrology chart and it's really amazing when you see our astrology charts on the app, they're like, this is the best match that two people could have. You're like progress driven souls. And I think that that's been one of the biggest, one of the biggest things that's really worked for us. Of all things that's not going to happen to us, it's stagnancy. <laughs> we might take a few too many risks. We might take a few too many needs of faith. We are fine. <laughs> but stagnant is, it, and, and, and that, and that, if I'm really honest, it's just who I am at my core. So it works. Let's talk about Even if you would look at least for seven hours. <laughs> Let's talk about the polarity thing that you spoke about. You're actually the second woman I've had on the show recently who has been the more major breadwinner in the relationship. And um, and they also brought up like how that plays with the, the masculine and, and feminine dynamics. And right, we I think you and I and, and many people that listen to this are, have listened enough and we're on the same page that, hey, we all have the masculine and feminine inside of us. But in a in a um, in the world we live in, right, that that there's a man and there's a woman, if it's in the relationship, he typically was going to hold more of the masculine energy and you're going to typically hold more of the feminine and making money work, traditional work in our world is often more of the masculine. And sometimes when we change switch positions um that can play with things right i know in my relationship um there have been times where m my wife makes more money than me and it's actually not the more money that i get triggered by i'm all for that i like have no it doesn't it doesn't do anything to my masculine to have that what i actually get i shared with her i'm envious because sometimes even when she's making more money than me her life just feels better she's taking baths she has more time. It feels like when I'm making money, I'm like working so hard. And it feels like when she's making money, yes, she's also working hard. I see how hard she works. But it also seems like she has so much more taking care of herself mixed into it. And I was like, man, I'm like, I said this to her actually last night. I was like, I'm envious of your life sometimes because it feels like you're just like in the bath all the time. <laughs> and the bath is a literal and a metaphor. Um, so I'm curious, like for you, for you, you know, it would, let me say, well, with that, with the other couple that was on here, they talked about how he, they really empower his masculine is like in the bedroom. He like, he like really holds the space and takes charge and leads in that area, which, which kind of balances them a little bit more. Um, how does it work for you guys? So the example you've just given about you and your wife is hilarious because we have the same one. So when Craig met he didn't really have his business and I was you know in a bit further along in business and he used to drive me insane as well because he clearly had to work so hard for 20k and I would wake up at 10 a.m on a projector I'd roll around be on makeup maybe you know snog a dog and I'm like oh I just made 20,000 and he used to drive him absolutely he's now accepted wait I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a projector I don't just roll <laughs> over and go I made two I like <laughs> what, what's wrong with what's wrong with my projector <laughs> Got my like, projecting broken. Yeah. I need a change. <laughs> um, I well, I think I'm very energetic, so I've created business, and I've I've a strong dominance of the physical domain as well. Um, I'm extremely focused, but I'm very energetic, so I'm very fast at manifesting. I've spent years, um, playing with consciousness, uh, and that's that's really the, the thing that I focused on most over the last however many years. So when that happens, which isn't every day, because I do work hard as well, and I don't want to sell the myth that I just roll around and make money. Um, yes, I have a very strong mastery over the energetic plane. And in the end, money is energy. So that's how I've done it. Um, and also, I was just further along in business, you know? I'm sure if one day he wants to roll around like a little sausage in the sheet now, like he might be able to make 20 grand doing it. Like, I don't think it's out of the question. I'm not sure he would like me saying on a podcast that he's going to roll around like a little bothage, but that aside, um, hilarity and me making more money than him. So, what makes the feminine feel safe? Congruence with your word, right? Saying what you're going to, saying, doing what you say that you're going to do, 
okay? So we ran into some problems with money where he was like stretching himself and there was times that he said that he would get something and then I ended up getting it. And what that created in our level, um, in our relationship that really affected polarity was a lack of trust. And so what we've found is that as long as he is in integrity with his word, right? And he leads in other areas of our life. It's a non-issue. We also we also have agreements. We have so many agreements in place. We take our relationship really seriously because we didn't used to. And then we ended up in a mess, right? Um, so, for example, an agreement that we have is that I need in business. But the second that I finish working, he makes decisions, right? And so I've told it, him that I love. When he's like, Hannah, we're going for dinner at this place. I don't want to, I wouldn't, uh, I don't want, don't ask me that. Don't, you know, even if he said to me, and some women might find this shocking, Hannah, wear this, I would enjoy that. Because finally, like, it feels like I'm just relaxing into his arms and it's beautiful. But then also there's this big piece on say what you say you're going to do. For me, it's very hard to respect a partner or man that isn't in integrity with his word. Yeah. And so that's something, yeah, that's something that Craig's really clear and clean on at the moment, even though he wasn't in a, in a journey. Um, what are the things? So the agreement really is that it's not just sex. It's like when I finish work, he leaves. That's the agreement. Whether it, I mean, it's silly things, sorting out the pit bulls. We have two pit bulls, two very big pit bulls. <laughs> There's only so much pit bull handling I can do, right? So um, every single night before I go to sleep, he goes around the house and he checks that there's no one in the house and everything is locked. He secures the par parameter. That's a masculine behavior, right? It's very limited to think that the masculine is just money yeah. because it's so much more than that, right? And I would say for us, the where we're at, and I still make significantly more, even though it probably will balance up at some stage, and polarity isn't an issue. Yeah, it's funny. I, you know, I think that it's not making money is not a masculine or feminine. It's it could go either way. I believe. I think it's the way the world currently works. Making money is the masculine, right? Because the way the world currently works, and when I say currently, right, not necessarily the way you do it or many people do it, but the way the majority makes money is setting a goal, taking action, getting result, getting a result. It's very like linear directive. Um, it's not energetic. It's not emotional. It's not spiritual, um, which I would say those things are much more feminine and you can make money doing all those things. Also, you have to take some action, right? So there's always going to be, but to me, making money is in its more, in its most, most natural sense is, is actually an ebb and flow of the masculine and the feminine. But it right, but we 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 live in a world where it's it's just highly dominant masculine, um, and so we, you know, it's like the common thing. Most men feel pressure around making money and providing, and even the ones that do it really well, that often is like how they their self esteem is about their money and how much they've made and whatnot. Um, and so they are. I talk about this a lot with men, right? Or and and a lot with women. This comes up too is when you ask somebody like who they are, they tell you what they do. Because yeah. there's such a connection between that tells you who you are because that's the world we've created. When what you do for a living has nothing to do often with who you are, you know? I, mm -hmm. um, but I, I love how you say there's so many, because there are so many things. To me, the masculine is a is is a space creator. It holds a frame. Um, it's the boundaries. It's the, it's, it's the shore. It's the riverbank. Uh, where the feminine is is the wild, the chaos, the unpredictable, um, the flow, the movement. Um, so I love how you how you guys create that that structure. He he really creates structure once once you kind of turn off, you shut it down. It's like his frame goes up and holds a lot. But even I suppose when I'm working or emotionally, because I'm an emotional projector, right? Which means I can have seventy five feelings in three seconds okay he's a lot more <laughs> uh, sure stable and so grounded. stable yeah grounded so you know when we go to ecstatic dances which is very rare for craig because let me give you context and craig craig within the military for 13 years so getting craig to go to an ecstatic dance is 
happened twice and I don't know it, right? I mean, I've never gone to an ecstatic dance, so I'm <laughs> winning. <laughs> you're all winning you're all winning well no one you hear this all you did it an ecstatic dance right i was like going wild he sat for an hour and a half and meditated and did breath work and i thought that was a very good depiction of actually he's holding that stillness yeah. and i'm just being a little crazy baby in the middle and so but i want to also be clear that i want to hear more women and more men speak to this as a topic because when we were first navigating our income, there was a phase where I thought I would have to choose my business over the relationship because I hadn't had any women model to me, yeah. right? The level of success and finances that I had and having a, a partner that didn't have that. And, you know, every conversation I'd have with, with a coach, they would say, oh, maybe it's not the right relationship for you because of polarity and da da da. And so I love the fact that you had another woman come on and say, no, there are ways you get to do. Yeah. As it came down to this, and there was a point that we broke up, right? Not just because of this, but various reasons. And I thought to myself, fuck, I've created all of this financial freedom, but why would I create financial freedom if I can't choose who I get to fucking love, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I love that this is even a conversation that's happening. I love how he is in that stance of him at a static dance. You know, I, it's funny. I had this really big breakthrough actually with ayahuasca where at the end of the ayahuasca journey, a candle gets lit and often people will get up and start dancing and it completely changed, right? You're in your own journey for however many hours. And then as people start to come back into their bodies, they often create a space where there's like movement and dance. At towards the end and not not always right but this has the, been the experience I've, I've had and um and you don't have to right there's people that are still on their journeys and often when that's going on um i'm often sitting there and just taking in what i'm seeing and one of the things that came up is often when people are dancing and having that type of experience they want everyone to come they're like come dance with me come come be with me come do this and I'd always felt this, there was something wrong that I didn't want to, that I've never felt called to that. Like I've never actually wanted to dance and, and I have fears about it and I have, uh, you know, like limiting, like limiting, self-limiting ideas about it and whatnot. But when I, when I get into my most grounded space, there's actually no desire. The fears are that I think I'm supposed to. And that mm -hmm. if I'm supposed to, and then I do it and I'm not good or whatever, then I, then it's like a double, it's like a lose, lose. And when I was sitting there, the thing that I got so present to was this, that we, we, we make up these things. Everyone isn't a writer. Everyone isn't a singer. Everyone isn't a, and everyone isn't a dancer. Dancer is a one way that we move our bodies and express ourselves. But to think that everyone is the same is, is lit is limiting in itself. And I had my first peaceful moment where I was able to sit there and in watching everyone else move and dance, I was being like filled up. And it was through the the simply just being with and allowing and not um, not feeling like I needed to that I got this such great like joy and experience. Um, and then I didn't have to do anything special besides just sit there and be with the energy that was like moving around me. Um, I love that. That's what he did at, uh, <laughs> that's, and I, you know, I didn't even go on about to move him. Yeah. <laughs> like that's just Craig being Craig, yeah. but it's interesting what you say, because for example, I move energy through dancing and it feels really fun for me. Like I love that. Whereas he's got, um, a charity that's called wild man and they go out in nature and they, they move their bodies, but it's an extremely different way to how I would move my body but it works for them. So I think it's beautiful what you're saying. It's like, firstly, trust that you know what's good for you and not. <laughs> like that's such a big thing. Just trust that you know, right? And then also someone else's path isn't yours. And I want to tie this to business again because I'm obsessed with business being the spiritual path. But like in business, you know, it's very easy to get caught up on, oh, this person's doing this on social media. That means that I should use this strategy or that person's doing that. And it's like, you're going to pave your own path and it's going to look different to everyone else's path. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Someone's going to build their business through dancing. Someone's going to build their business through singing, if you want to use that metaphor. But it's it's exactly the same. And it comes down to that deep self-trust and not shooting all over ourselves. 
Yeah. And you're the, you're not the first person to, to that I've heard talk about either business or money being a spiritual experience that your relationship to money or business says more about your relationship to spirit than almost anything else. Right. If you are, if you are somebody who is like cutthroat and, and mean and horrible and aggressive, and that's how you, and you've made a lot of money that your relationship to the world and to others is that's what it is. Cutthroat, aggressive, you know, and that is your relationship to spirit because everything is, is spirit. Everything is, is connected energetically. And that, and that our relationship to the, that you can see, um, you can see our relationship to money and business through the way we show up everywhere. Yeah. And can I just speak to this piece? Cause a lot of people have got pro projections on business owners. Oh, that person's cutthroat or that person stomped in all of these people to make that money. And it's interesting how oh, the second that someone has got success, compassion tends to go out of the window for them. Mm -hmm. And so for me, business being the spiritual path is if I met a business owner that was cutthroat, I would ask myself, what in you hurt so bad that you have to hurt others, mm. right? And that would be the obstacle, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the wound where they heal. And so that's why, you know, everything in soul's eyes is perfection. You know, it, it, there's a lot of judgment around success and business and wealth. And it's like, well, if someone's created wealth and business and success in a way that they destroyed their family or burnt themselves out, it's probably not because in their very core, they're an asshole. It's probably because they didn't know another way, right? Yeah. That's a person that needs healing and greater awareness too. And so I really like to speak to that other sign of the coin as well. You know, every behavior isn't a cause. The cause is internal, cause is consciousness. Behavior is effect, result is effect. I have a client, I have a client who, um, if, if you, if, if we're just kind of sitting together and talking without any energy in the space and I ask him what he really wants, it's peace and love and family time with his daughter and his, his friends and his partner. It's to help other men that he knows that are struggling with things. It's to help, uh, his, the people that work for him expand their goals and dreams. And he, he, his business takes care of many of the families, right. That, that of the people he employs and, um, but when you then watch him in his business, what shows up often is pissed off, angry, yelling, you know, by like a very intense reactions. And, um, the disconnect is a fear is fear, right? He gets afraid. He gets so afraid of, he gets afraid and overwhelmed that he's going to, that, you know, the, the, the pressure the stress, they're going to blow it. They're going to mess up. Um, and he really wants to, he has so much care and desire to do a good job and succeed. But the fear, instead of right leading him from the the man he wants to be, often leads him into this way to try to protect. Um, and that that's what I just got from what you said is uh, is is that that thing can override that fear or those those right those subconscious beliefs override our desires or um, yeah who we want to be or what we want to create. Absolutely. And, you know, I can even relate. I pay a team of varying people every single month and, um, there's a pressure there. I'm like, Oh, I, I, I've never been in a situation where I've not been able to pay everybody ever. Um, but it does, it does play in your mind. But what I'm grateful for is that I have the awareness of Hannah, you're in a fear response, Hannah, you're in a da da da. And so because I have that awareness, I can choose to respond in a different way. The thing is that when spirituality is in, and, and tools and awareness isn't being mixed with business or isn't being taught to everybody, you're in a fear response. You don't understand what's happening. You're going to probably act in a pissed off way and then you're going to shame and blame yourself and you're stuck in this negative cycle because you think that you're an asshole and everyone thinks you're an asshole, but actually deep down there's more at play, which is why for me foundationally, like, and, and everything that I do is education and awareness. I believe that people are trying to be good, but they, they can only do as good as they know. Yeah. I love that. Let's wrap up there. I love that P that well, that ending statement of people can only do as good as they know. When people ask me, um, what do you think more is more important actions or mindset? It's, I always, it's always mindset. 
to that point, right? Because you can only do as good as you know, and what you don't know ultimately becomes the thing that gets in your way or stops you. Um, thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for going on this roundabout journey from, from, you know, multidimensional business and scaling multidimensional businesses to, uh, your shaman journey to your polarity in your relationship. Um, I just feel like we touched on so many different, uh, fun and interesting and unique topics. How do people, if people want to work with you, if they want to take one of your courses, how, what's the best way to find So you? we've created, so yeah, we've created a super special link for everybody. It's um, www.theschoolofintegrativehealing.com slash dream mason. Okay. I'm sure that we popped in, in the show notes and you have three options on that page. You can join my free community, which is where you find uh, my podcast episodes or any events that we have coming up or any offers. Um, it's just a fun place to be as well because you'll be surrounded by other spiritual entrepreneurs. Um, the second option is that I've got a free course called Multidimensional Business. Okay, So it's taking that, that, that structure that I just mentioned and, and fleshing it out. This is the course that the the lady who sells planes was like, wow, you know, I shouldn't call her that. She has a name. She's going to listen to this episode, I bet. Like, <laughs> Margareta, beautiful Margareta. Um, and then if you're like me and you have feelings and you know what feelings mean and you trust that and you move on that, you can also book in a discovery call with my team. There are so many ways that we can work together. We prefer to just hear where you're at than me trying to sell you something to fit you in a course you know everything that we do is super bespoke um and then yeah drop me a message on instagram tell me what you like ask me a question and i'm hearing from you this has been so fun i wish all podcasts included polarity shamanism business <laughs> death <laughs> well, I'm, I like, I'm, I'm here for it I, I you know i told you at the beginning i used to i podcasted for a long time trying to do it like right, trying to do it the way, you know, really sticking to a thing or um, really getting clear with the person about what we were going to talk about. And what I realized one day was this is, this is our experience. This is for you and me and the people that are meant to find it will find it. And the people that are meant to resonate with it will resonate with it. And I'm just not, I am just unwilling to do things for others. Like not, not for a, um, not to support or serve others. I'm, I'm actually all about the serving and of adding value to others, but I'm not willing to compromise myself for others. And it's about like, Hey, I'm going to do this podcast to awaken something in me and hopefully awaken something in you and create value for us and trust that in us doing that, that there's value for others. Um, but we, I just think we live to you know, it's a great moment to us. Like, yeah, you know, the new, um, the new, uh, social media threads, I'm like, man, it feels like we're in a world where people are trying to get away from this. Like we're, we're noticing how, how bad so much of these things are for us in so many ways. And it's not to say that they're good or bad, but that they're, they're taking up a lot of energy in, in a lot of our spaces unintentionally. And I noticed like, there's this thing where we, like, oh, we, oh, we have to go do this new thing. Now we got to get in this new thing or we're going to, we're going to miss something. And I like, to me, that's a, it's a great metaphor is like, I don't want to play that game. We're going to, that's a, that's a game of, we're just going to be chasing our tail forever because there's going to be another new thing after that. And next thing we know, we're going to be on 75 social medias. Right. And, and I think we can do that with here too. If, right, if I'm trying to appease everyone, every audience member, or we're trying to get your perfect audience member, we're just chasing. And, um, Hey, you know what? It might work for some people. And it, it for me, what I found in trusting my journey, is just like, doesn't work for me. So I get to have really fun conversations about everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's definitely been one of the most fun podcasts I've done. And also it showcases people's authenticity, right? Yeah. Which is the big, beautiful thing. So thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. I will put all your notes in the show notes and those links in the show notes for everyone. Hannah, thank you so much. Everyone listening, thank you for being here. I hope you love this episode. Please share it with somebody who you know and believe it will provide value for. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Honestly, I'm just a rebel who found a cause and has a dream. And I'm super grateful for your support. If you got anything from this, please help me out and share this podcast with one person today.
You can find me at thedreammason.com or at inspirationalalex on Instagram. You are a dream mason because your dreams don't build themselves.